This video is brought to you by Squarespace. I've been very fortunate in my relatively short coffee career to have gotten my sticky barista paws on a lot of different espresso machines, but the one we're looking at today knocks a few firsts off my list. It's my first experience with a La Spaziale, but also with a pump-driven machine using a smaller 53mm portafilter. But it seems, and it's really no secret, that a 58mm portafilter has become more or less ubiquitous when it comes to espresso machines, and actually very highly sought after when it comes to prosumer and home-focused machines as well. But getting a chance to test out a 53mm portafilter and experience the differences for myself was definitely worthwhile. Designed in collaboration between La Spaziale and Portland-based Clive Coffee, the Luca A53 Mini is aimed pretty squarely at home baristas or small commercial environments, looking for a consistent and repeatable brewing experience. But that's a pretty broad category, and at $2,900, that's a competitive market. So today we're going to take an in-depth look at the A53 Mini and see if it's really up to the task. But first, and as always when it comes to reviews like this, I will say that Clive sent me this machine for my review, but they of course agreed to my terms of no control or consent over what I can or cannot say in this video, and with all that out of the way, let's dive into it. When you first lay your eyes on the A53 Mini, at least for me, mine were drawn directly to the control pad. So let's start there since it controls most of what you do on the machine. On the right side of the pad, there are three buttons. The hot water, which is pretty self-explanatory, the boiler, which toggles the steam boiler, and the power control, which turns the machine on and off. All these buttons also play a secondary role because you'll use them in programming the machine's temperature and shot volumes, which are secondary functions of the single and double shot buttons on the left side of the control pad. And we'll get more in depth on that function and programming in general in a minute. Along the bottom of the pad here, you've got the straightforward temperature settings and display, which as you can see are in Celsius. And moving further to the left on its own little island, you've got the steam control lever. Below that, you've got your battle station with the steam wand, hot water tap, and the 53mm group head. On the backsplash here, there is a single gauge with two readings, both brew and steam pressure. Also on the face is the front load 2.4 liter water reservoir, which feeds into the roughly half liter brew boiler and 1.2 liter steam boiler, both of which are nickel plated brass. And this level of material quality seems to carry through in the inside of the machine with lots of brass and metal and minimal plastic components. And lastly, since we're inside the machine, it seems fitting to mention that the pressure is controlled via a vibration pump that's set to 9 bars. So now that we've got the overview out of the way, let's get into what it's like to use and live with the A53 Mini. First up, on a cold start, the machine hits brewing and steaming temp in about 10 to 15 minutes, which I consider a reasonable timeline and on par with most prosumer dual boilers. But as usual, I always recommend you let it sit for about 30 minutes, so the portafilter and other group surfaces can get up to temp for some added stability. And speaking of temperatures, to adjust it you'll need to enter programming mode, and to do this you can press and hold the power button for 3 seconds and the current setting will begin to flash. Then press the hot water button to move through the settings and press the power again to set. And you'll also be using a very similar process to also set the shot volume metrics. So enter programming mode, press the shot button you want to set, and let the water run until you hit your preferred yield. Press the shot button again to stop, and then the power button to lock it in. But before we move on, I do have a couple notes on the volume metrics. When setting them up, it's important to do so with coffee in the portafilter and using your desired dose. Just like any other brewing method, there's a certain amount of water that's absorbed by the dry coffee. Let's call that the angel share. And if you only run the group to set your yield weight, you'll end up running short and possibly having to toss the shot. And let's call that the devil share. The only time you'll want to run just water is when you're creating a manual shot setting. And you can do that just by running more water than you think you'll ever reach for a shot, allowing you to be the master of your own destiny. And one final note on volumetrics. In terms of accuracy, I was pretty impressed that the A53 Mini pumped out multiple shots with little to no sway in yield, just as long as you use the same coffee, dose, and grind setting. Alright, so now let's talk about the elephant in the room, the smaller portafilter diameter. Now, there's a lot of opinions about this out there, whether it be professional or home barista circles, and I'm sure the debate will rage on long into the future. But in my experience, and basically my time using this and comparing it to full-sized 58mm portafilters, there's no real detriment to using a smaller one. 
Of course, it's convenient to have the size that most tools and toys for espresso come in, but you can sleep well at night knowing you aren't missing out on something in the cup. So the only FOMO you should experience is that you can't get the next over-engineered, over-aesthetic, and overpriced tool getting views on TikTok. In all honesty, I found the deeper portafilter more forgiving in terms of extraction issues, reducing the likelihood of channeling, and I'm sure the pre-programmed 3 second pre-infusion helps with that as well. And grinding for a 53mm portafilter was purely just a slight adjustment coarser to make up for the added depth so I encountered no major issues or quality swings when getting set up for brewing success. Across a handful of copies of different roast levels, flavor profiles, and shot styles, the A53 was able to keep up pretty well, only leaving short gaps of time between shots, maybe 20 to 40 seconds, waiting for the temp to rebound depending on how long the previous shot length was. And for those who are proud card-carrying members of the Steam team, you'll be happy to know this is a very capable machine. For starters, the wand itself has a lot of adjustability, which allows you to steam in whatever position you're comfortable in. It also puts out some serious power, so you can steam both small and large volumes of milk. And lastly, it gives you the ability to taper or go full on, for those situations where you may need just a bit more finesse. As always, with the good comes the... well, I don't want to say bad but let's talk about some of the quirks and downsides I ran into during my time with the A53 Mini. For one, the workspace on the machine can feel a little cramped. With the overhang up top, and even some extra body panel on each side of the drain tray, it's a little bit boxed in. This also leads to a lack of clearance from the group, so if you use a spouted portafilter, you'll need to use a low profile cup and scale. Also, since this machine is very home barista focused, I'm kind of surprised that they don't have an auto on off timer. And because it's got a push button start, you can't turn it on with a timer switch without doing some kind of modification. And for a machine in this price range, having a digital PID readout would be nice. And in that same vein, a digital control would also give you a broader temp range, which on the A53 Mini is locked in between 91 and 97 degrees Celsius. And finally, the vibration pump is adjustable, but it's not all that easily accessible. Even if lower pressure extractions aren't for everyone, and I know this machine is more aimed at the casual barista scene, I do appreciate it when manufacturers make big parts like this more accessible to make future potential repairs and replacements easier. Before this machine landed on my bar, I can't really say that I heard a lot about it. And I think that's because in a lot of cases, it gets written off because of its 53mm portafilter. Granted, in a perfect world, every machine would come with the same size, allowing for broad availability of upgrades and accessories. But I don't need to tell you that we don't live in a perfect world. And the Luca A53 Mini makes for a solid kitchen workhorse. Personally, I don't love the look of it. It's got a bit of a retro 70s flair. It kind of seems like the machine that would be on Ron Burgundy's counter. My apartment smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> now, I don't know who's counting, but that's back-to-back -back videos with Anchorman references. But the Luca A53 Mini's true charm is in its straightforward usability and repeatability, and it doesn't claim to be anything it's not. I mean, it was designed to be more of a casual home barista's machine, and I'd say it definitely achieves that. So if you're in the market for a dual boiler that will crank out quality shots one after the other, and puts down some serious steam power, don't sleep on this one. And on that note, I think it's time I wrap this one up, and as always, pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the A53 Mini, and also what are your thoughts on smaller portafilter diameters? If you've tried them, have you noticed a significant difference in shot quality? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below, and don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Squarespace. They've made building a website super easy with a huge variety of beautiful functional templates, all of which can be customized using their drag and drop fluid engine editing and have automatic compatibility with desktop and mobile browsers. And no matter the site you want to build, Squarespace has the powerful tools to help. With a blog, you can schedule, post, and share your content. And with a storefront, you can sell products, whether physical, digital, or a service. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Prometheus for 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram, at Spermetheus, for content throughout the week. My blog at Spermetheus.com. And as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.